that this tutorial covers the use of path controls in timeline effects on the Cayenne and Carrera switchers. It is assumed that the viewer has already seen other related tutorials on using EMEMs, timelines, and master EMEM levels to build effects. When running keyframe effects, the path between keyframes is calculated as the effect runs. The path between keyframes can be changed at each keyframe and for every controllable parameter individually. Path control is mainly used where changes of size and position of wipes or IDPM transforms are used. The path types available are linear, S-linear, and curve. A hold can be used on any particular keyframe for any parameter. The default path type is curve, so when a simple three keyframe effect is built, the path between keyframes forms a gradual curve. This example uses a transform move of the IDPM X and Y position for demonstration, as this is the easiest way to see how the path parameters can change an effect. If a different default path is required, a new default keyframe can be learned in the suite prefs menu once all path parameters have been set for the desired defaults. All of the path menus are accessible from the EMEM and Timeline Path submenu. The DPM menus also show the same path controls but only for the delegated DPM parameter. These path controls are provided in the DPM menu as this is often where path changes are required. This three keyframe example uses the default path type of curve. The curvature is most noticeable on the middle keyframe. A recursive effect has been added to better show the path between keyframes. Here is the same effect but with S linear for all of the keyframes. Notice how the IDPM path is a straight line, the box slowing down at keyframe 2, stopping at the keyframe, changing direction, and leaving the keyframe in a straight line but accelerating as it leaves keyframe 2. The path in the middle section of the move is essentially linear. With the path of all keyframes set to linear, the speed of the move is constant so the box moves at a constant velocity throughout the effect and abruptly changes direction at each keyframe without slowing down. This produces a bounce effect at keyframe 2 and an abrupt start and stop at the beginning and end of the effect. Generally, S-Linear gives the most desirable look when a straight path is required. Lastly, there is a hold function. This effect shows a curve path with a hold setting on keyframe 2. The path from keyframe 1 to 2 can be linear, S-Linear, or curve, but once keyframe 2 is reached, the location path parameters are held for the duration of keyframe 2. The effect then jumps to the next keyframe at the end of keyframe 2's duration, which becomes the hold time. These examples have only modified one parameter, the IDPM X and Y location, on all keyframes to demonstrate the different path types. In the EMEM and Timeline Path menu, individual parameters of the different parts of the switcher can be changed as needed. Choosing just one mix effects bank, a second selection column is displayed showing all of the ME parameters that can be individually modified. The ME is subdivided for buses, keyers, transitions, wipes, and the IDPM channels. Choosing just one parameter, Key 1 IDPM, displays most of the IDPM parameters that can be modified. For an IDPM channel, these are the transform parameters and some additional IDPM channel controls. There are some IDPM path parameters that are only accessible from the IDPM menu, notably in the defocus, lighting, and recursive submenus. These IDPM path controls are independent of the settings in the EMEM and Timelines path menu. When a path parameter needs to be modified, it is often easier to simply select all of the ME parameters rather than work out exactly which parameter needs to be changed. The curve path provides a large range of variation as it provides three controls called tension, continuity, and bias or TCBs for short, 
to vary the path through a keyframe. The other two path types, linear and S-linear, can in fact be created from the curve path settings. Returning to our three keyframe effect that uses the default curve path, we will now consider modifying just one curve parameter, IDPM location, on just one keyframe, keyframe 2. To modify the path, step to the keyframe to be modified. Select the ME and the IDPM in use and the parameters to be modified. In this case, locate. Alternatively, for an IDPM channel, select the IDPM menu, the transform submenu, and select locate. The curve mode should already be selected. Tension affects the rate of change through the keyframe. Here is an example with the tension at keyframe 2, set to a value of 1. This produces an S-linear path at keyframe 2. Tension can also be set negative. Here is an example with the tension set to negative 1. This produces more of a curve in the path. Continuity affects the path through the keyframe. Here is an example with the continuity set to plus 1. This produces a discontinuity at keyframe 2. Another example with the continuity set to negative 1. This produces a linear path or bounce at keyframe 2. Bias affects how much of the path change occurs before or after the keyframe and is the easiest parameter to understand. Here is an example with the bias at plus 1. The curve now appears after keyframe 2. Another example with bias at negative 1. Now the curve appears before keyframe 2. Note that in each of these examples only one parameter was changed at a time. If all three parameters of tension, continuity, and bias are set to plus 1 at keyframe 2, this is the result. Again, with all location parameters at keyframe 2 set to negative 1, most parameters should be in the range of plus or minus 1, where 0 is neutral. The available range of each parameter is plus or minus 9.99, which will produce very exaggerated effects. It is recommended that each of the parameters are changed individually with some simple effects to learn the interaction between the three controls and become familiar with their operation. This concludes the tutorial on path control.